We've been going over the seven railroads of uh, uh, that in North America. The, and now that we we are we are at seven railroads again. This is some highlights of the Great Northern history. There's part one is the lines east. That's what they always talked about east of Haver. Um, so this is just some highlights. So you see the this is the ultimate Great Northern, and then of course the main line uh, what went uh, out through Wilmer, Fargo, and then up to Minot to to Haver across through the uh, Rockies, and then through the Cascades to um, Seattle. That's the main line. Is everybody seeing a steam locomotive? Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me get my notes. Yes. Uh, not yet. Eight, four, four, four. Yeah, there it is. Four, four, yeah. two. Four, four, two. Four, it's four, a, two. Uh, an Atlantic. Yes, an Atlantic. And and the uh, great this, this is uh, this is from early in the century. Um, the Great Northern had. Um, you know the passenger cars were a lot lighter, and they were you know they bounced around and stuff like that. But the trains weren't that heavy, um, so they had these probably. This is probably oh before 1910. And it's a and it's a class K. Every railroad had their own class system. For the uh, you probably heard of the K4 Pacific on the on the, uh, on the Pennsylvania, um, and that's just and they had an M was I think the uh, uh, mountain and they had an I was a decapod and they just they lettered the the, the the locomotives and every railroad was different so you know it, it um, they got a little bit of standardization during the World War uh, One where yeah. the uh, United States Railroad Administration USRA built these standard designs and I, I was reading out of this book about steam locomotives and they they really gave high marks to the to the government because they got um, uh, very re good experts on steam locomotives, and they put this uh, this national panel together, and they came up with all this design stuff. And a lot, a lot of those designs lasted through the end of steam. They were really good. So you'll see things called a USRA Pacific or USRA Mike Mike Mikado or something like that. And those are from that USRA group. But anyway, this is a this is before World War One, and you can see the high drivers and um, um, and they, the uh, Great Northern and the and the and the uh, Pennsylvania, if you can see right here, that's a, a bell pair firebox. It's kind of a square firebox, and the it's quite a different design um, than the regular ones that are round. And uh, they, they, the Great Northern and the uh, Pennsylvania, and I think there might have been a couple of other railroads that that had them, but they swore by them. They said they were more efficient and stronger and Anyway, so you'll see these bell fire fireboxes on most of their locomotives. So that's the K1 Atlantic. Um, come on now. There we go. Now, this is at uh, one of the roundhouses. You can see again the bell fire firebox. Here's a good view of it square, basically square shaped rather than round. Um, these are 080, they're a big switcher. And the uh, these things could pull a lot of cars because it was a, basically a it was like a like a Mikado with with uh, uh, eight drivers four axles but no no trailing truck no uh, back here or no leading truck so all of the weight of the engine is on the track and so they 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 could pull quite a bit for a relatively small engine and, and that's what you need in the yard they couldn't go very fast. Because they had small drivers and they didn't have a, a lead truck to kind of pull the engine around a curve, but but to go through switches and stuff like that. And so this is obviously at the end of steam, probably late fifties. Um, you know when they kind of boarded them up, and then for a few years if, during the peak, uh, the grain rush, they would drag some of them out um, and run them. But at, the diesels were coming in, and as we've talked about. The diesels were just so efficient, the railroads could not believe the reduction in cost. Uh, from not from uh, they, they were a lot more efficient. You know, an engine like this is probably five percent efficient, and and the early early uh, um, General Motors diesels are probably twenty five percent efficient. You know, so it's uh, I mean, with these things, you lose some heat outside, as we talked about. But but I remember Ron, you asked well, where does the condensate go, and I said right out the chimney, because it it boils the water. Uh -huh. They use it, 
Uh, it's 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 somewhat superheated. It's under some pressure. Uh, so, but but it goes down in, in down here, and then it it goes in at uh, say 150 pounds, and it comes out at uh, some lower pressure, probably you know 20 pounds or 10 pounds or something like that, and it blows it out the chimney, and that's all your most of your heat. So those that's a switcher. Uh, here's another one. You can kind of see a little bit more that it's just it's sitting there right on these these uh, eight drivers are sitting on the track. And uh, but it, they could move a lot of cars with them. The diesel switchers, though, came in and, and they were they were faster. Uh, they didn't have to add water. They didn't have to have to uh, have all the maintenance. So they, they took over quite. And, and plus, they in the cities, people did not like the um, steam locomotives. Um, I went to nursery school. My sister and I went to nursery school at the University of Minnesota. It was an experimental thing. My mom was in education at that time. Um, and uh, we were in the old music building. I don't know if you know where that is, in the corner of the campus, not too far from the smokestacks. It's right, you're, I mean, if you jump out of the window, you'd land on the, on the Northern Pacific tracks. And then during the day, uh, we, and when I was in um, uh, four-year-olds, uh, we were up in the top floor. And in the springtime, uh, when a steam locomotive would come by, you know, they'd be pushing cars up the hill there uh, into the Chicago Great Western. The whole room would fill with smoke. And then the uh, the teacher would have to take us out in the hall until the smoke cleared. It was just, so you can imagine when, when the diesel switchers came in, the, uh, you know, the university and everybody else and the city fathers kind of came in and said, uh, you got to run those diesels in the city. We don't want to see, and they would pass smoke ordinances, ordinances and things like that. So, uh, let's see. Here's another um, switcher, good side view of it, and um, that, you know, again, all uh, small drivers, um, all the weights on the on the on the uh, drivers, so they could they could pull a lot of cars. Now this is a a. Um, um, let's see, what is that? That's a um, uh, a 280, which is a consolidation. So it has two wheels in front and then four drivers and then no trailing truck. And so this again, this is probably probably uh, also um, you know around World War one time frame. Here's a uh, another uh, Mikado, or excuse me, a consolidation on a local. You can see a local is just a uh looks like he's only got well, he's got an auxiliary tender plus he's got one box car so oh there, oh yeah I, I thought there were two but that's the door <laughs> yeah and then the caboose so, yeah anyway someplace uh you know out in the uh, out on the system and then uh this is typical uh great northern roundhouse and then a um um this looks like a uh, like either a pedestrian or a road bridge to the for the uh, for the railroad. Uh, it's probably out west someplace in North Dakota or something like that. Here's a this is a uh, the Great Northern like these uh, truss turntables, and so all the weights here, and then they'd have um, rods holding the rail. It's a truss bridge, and it would be used for the, for the um, um, for the turntable. But this is a, a Mikado. And the Great Northern had the biggest Mikados ever made. They just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I think this is, that's a class O is the Mikado. And uh, this, I think, is about an O5. Now, here's an O8. And you can see that's a, that's a big locomotive for a Mikado. And then they had a big, huge tender back here. And uh, he's probably pulling uh, a mile and a half of cars someplace, someplace, um, this looks like just because there's only two cross arms. I would guess this is probably one of the lines. It's not the main line, but it's one of the the secondary main lines. And they had secondary main lines all over the place, like from from uh, Breckenridge, Minnesota. They would kind of run at a diagonal up to um, um, they ran up to uh, uh, Devil's Lake. So it, it one of those types of lines. But you can see. And and the the later Mikados they made it bigger and so then they had to hang the 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 pumps um, and, on the, and the air compressor on the front of the locomotive because they they just didn't have 
room on the side. So here's a uh, another O8. It's the eighth series of, of Mikados. And you can see Mikado, it says a leading truck, two wheels, and then eight drivers, and then a trailing truck, and a huge tender. Yeah. Um, and they, they would pull a lot of cars. And they used them all over the system. They had quite a few of them. This was kind of their mainstay um, for general freight. Now, this is a 2102, which is a Santa Fe type. And obviously, this I must have been at the end of steam because if they're all lined up. It must have been very sad to go through for those, those guys who were rail fans to watch their steam locomotives lined up, uh, waiting for the torch. Now, this is a, a Great Northern had some oddballs, um, partially because they had they had the ore uh, operation up north. And um, and so it's a 2680. And uh, so it was basically, they, they took a 2662, but, it, but they modified it so that the, uh, uh, the last... Uh, has a driver on, instead of a trailing truck, so they get more tractive effort. And these things are they're they're strange looking beasts. They're the only ones that had them, but they used them uh, right almost to the end of steam. So they must have been a good design. And they uh, uh, and they used them up a lot in the ore, and that's why this looks like this looks like Northeast Minnesota, where they're at a, near an ore um, uh, mine. James J. Hill got early into the. Uh, or he saw the, the potential for the iron ore mining. And so he bought, and the railroad at the time had just done some expansion, so they didn't have a lot of money. So he personally bought a whole bunch of land up there. And um, and they started mining. And then later, he sold it to the railroad at cost. He was, a, he was really an honest guy. But he said the railroad should have that. The stockholders should have that uh, benefit of that. And so that's how the, the, the Great Northern... Um, um, and, and they use these things in, in ore service as well as a few other places too. Small drivers and and um, lots of power. And so they, they can pull a lot of ore cars. So here's a um, another uh, um, uh, Mikado. This is an earlier one, but there, you can see they're big. And look at the length of that freight. It's probably a mile and a half of cars. And so... How did they start those? I mean, now they can start them with tight locks because they have a, you know, you, the C44s with a, you know, each one of them has 180,000 pounds of tra attractive effort and you have three of them. Now you can start a lot of cars, but this thing has about 50,000 pounds of attractive effort. And now you've got this huge train. And so the way they did it was with slack. And, and you don't hear the slack anymore, but you used to, you know, you used to, you'd hear them pulling out. And so they, when they would start the train, the, the, the locomotive only had to pull one boxcar. And then it pulled the next boxcar. And then it pulled the next one. And they had to be very careful because that slack is running back. And he had to keep his speed down because when he got to the caboose, you know, if he was going five miles an hour, that caboose is going to go zero to five miles an hour in like right now. And if, if the guy's inside, uh, if they're up in the cupola and they're not hanging on, they're going to be on the floor. And they did, people did get injured. So, uh, in fact, that's why a lot of the railroads, like in Milwaukee, went to bay windows. So that they, that uh, at least, you know, if they lost their balance or something, they're, they're on the floor and not falling down from a cupola. But, yeah, look at the length of, length of those. Um, um, now this, has, this, this one has uh, six cross arms. So I'm guessing this is probably on the, on the main line. Uh, you know, Western Minnesota, maybe up through near Benson or something like that, Morris or Benson. Um, here's a, a 2102. Uh, again, from small drivers, uh, lots of, uh, um, you know, lots of tractive effort. And and so here's the bell per firebox. It's kind of square. And then, of course, they hang the pumps on the front because the boiler is so big. And so they would they would haul uh, uh, you know big trains with this for the general freight. Uh, here's another one. This one's actually in color, so it's actually running pretty late in the scheme. And this is uh, um, uh, all uh, refrigerator cars, probably probably apples coming in from the west coast or something like that. 
and and uh, then they'd have uh, ventilated. They'd open the little vents on the on the uh, um, on the reefers to, to regulate temperature. And this this is the R two, and R is the two eight eight two class on the on the um, on the Great Northern, and and this was built in the nineteen twenties. And when it was built, it was the largest locomotive anywhere. And this is before the big boys and some of the other locomotives came along. But the Great Northern had the biggest locomotive. They were quite advanced. And and, and they used these not only in the mountains, but they use them across the the, uh, the Dakotas and Montana, where, where it kind of goes up, and then it goes down, and then it goes up, and then it goes down. And, and so having a big locomotive like that was, was, uh, was really good. They could run long trains and keep the speed up. So here is a um, what 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 are those um, things in the front there? Are those is that part of the brake system or compressors or something? Um, they might be hiding. Um, then maybe they have pumps under there or something like that, or it could be oil no coolers. up up above. Oh, up these above, are these above. are those are air compressors. Yeah, air compressors. Yeah, cross yeah. compound. So the so, steam goes, you know, and and. Uh, and then they're they compressing the air to go back to the train then yeah 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 so it comes back gotta... here it goes through these these pipes here to cool off and then it goes into the air reservoir and there's one for the locomotive and, and this one's for the train reservoir the two brake systems on a locomotive yeah so they they hang the pumps uh uh air the compressors up, up front so but that that was a big locomotive and those operated the brakes then on the train. Yes. Okay. They would. They would. There was a cross compound. It would kind of go like this, you know. And and uh, so one of these is a steam piston, and one is an air piston. And so that's how it it uh, it pumped pumped the air up. Um, this is a. Uh, see, I think that's a. Uh, looks like a uh, a mountain. And yeah, that was a P, and that did not have a, a bear, bell pair firebox on it. I think this is a P class mountain, but it's in freight service. That's late in the um, late in the. I think this is uh, Fergus Falls. That looks like the Hoot Lake power plant. But anyway, this is the old St. Paul and Pacific line that went up through St. Cloud and um, Alexandria and and uh, Fergus Falls, and and on up to to Moorhead. But they they would take these passenger engines at late late uh, the good ones and they kept them in freight service in the fifties because by then the diesels had taken over. So this is a uh, Herald that was uh, bolted to the side of a tender 